Um, is UTV going to be implemented in uh, in 2K7? Um, that's certainly something that's that's on our list. Um, I, I mean, it's, you know, something we we did in, in U2004. I expect. I mean, right now, I expect we do it. I mean, there's a chance that it may, may be something that we uh, that we include in, a, in an update after we launch. Okay. Um, what about uh, the in-game ranking system? Is that going to be linked to like an outside web page, or is it going to load up directly in the browser? So it's going to be both. So we'll definitely make that. That'll be much better integrated into the game itself than it was in the past. I mean, both in terms of being able to look at stats from actually within the game, like being able to go to the scoreboard, and if you want to bring up the stats of anybody that's playing in the game, you'll be able to do that while you're playing. So it'll be. Uh, so yeah, so it'll be much better, um, a much bigger part of the game. Okay. Are there some rewards attached to the ranking system? It's just really, I mean, we'll, we have a, so we'll have all kinds of stats. I mean, in terms of rewards, we'll probably have, have, they won't be rewards that affect gameplay, but we'll probably have things like expert sniper or things like that. So, so rewards that are just kind of, yeah, kind of metal kind of things that, uh, and, and you know, and, and the nice thing about that too is that those will be reflected, I mean, easy to find. So if you're just like if you're playing a match, you can uh, go in the scoreboard and look and really get an idea of what this player is good at, what his you know what his skills are. Gotcha. Um, will the level of streaming be used uh, in the single player campaigns as well, and uh, will it be available with the mods like the, uh, the modding? Um, you know, the level streaming really we're only using for transitioning between matches. So a, okay. a one match will be played on a single level. And we, you know, we can actually do very large. I mean, the, the limits on the size of levels we're going to do are based on, on what's fun and not what, um, and not the size and not, not any technical limits. I mean, in fact, even with U2004, we um, we played, we were testing much larger levels, and some of the levels we tested were much larger than what we shipped, but we just didn't find they were very fun to play. So here, I mean, that certainly was, we'll certainly have large, much larger levels than what we showed here, and this was about half of the level. That we yeah, okay. I was to um, That's probably probably a, about an average size for a level. We'll have some that are much larger, some that are smaller. Okay. Um, but what we'll be using the streaming for is to have seamless transitions between matches. Okay. So at the end of a match now, you'll never go back to a loading screen. You'll always be connected, you'll be able to chat with your, your friends, you'll stay on the same team, you'll be able to decide if you want to switch up your teams, and it'll be a completely connected experience. And then when everybody's loaded the new map, you know, you'll all go in at the same time. How does that work in this sort of the visual representation of like when you go over to the stream and you sort of you want to convoy on your way to a different location? It's really there's really I mean there's really not so much of a visual representation. I mean you basically be all hanging out chatting in the previous map while the new map loads in the background. Oh, I see. Um, it, and which really will, will happen quite fast. I mean the, but of course the thing is one of the things we want to do is, is set it up it'll happen quite fast on, on most good machines. I mean if somebody's got a really slow machine you don't want them to be you know I mean one of the problems in in past games is your uh, you know, a new map loads and half the people get in and the other half of people is three minutes later when they get in and, you know and there's already been scores and all kinds of stuff has happened so now it really allows us to, to sync that up and also um, it allows the server to know exactly how many people are going to be playing the match and make sure that the teams are balanced and everything's set up right. Okay. The um, with the uh, you mentioned the vehicle CT well Jim actually did um, mentioned vehicle CTF and, and vehicle DM. Um, are those going to be separate spots in the browser as well, or are they going to be integrated in the? You know, actually, that's something. That's a good question right now. Right, that's one of the things we're debating right now. Okay. I mean, vehicle CTF in, in particular is something we always knew we were going to do for 2007, but but really it's actually become more of a focus uh, since we started working on it. It's been it's really a lot of fun. Yeah. So it's something that we're uh, emphasizing more than we thought we originally would. Yeah, Jim Brown had mentioned that uh, it's a lot more fun than. They thought it was going to be. Like, yeah. It's turning out a lot better. So. Yeah. Um, with uh, with vehicle deathmatch, really, I mean, obviously you'll be able to play free for all deathmatch, or, or but we really see vehicle deathmatch being more of a uh, more focused and especially in terms of competitive play on team deathmatch, where a vehicle the vehicles become these key things that both that the teams are trying to control. With you know, with with uh, individual, it's just kind of it's just more things to add to to the mayhem. Okay. With the. Uh, you mentioned helmets being able to uh, protect the player. Uh, will those be visible? Um, they, they probably will be visible. You'll have there's an effect after you shoot a guy. He's okay. got a helmet, so you know that you shot. And it's, it's a one shot thing. So if okay. you snipe a guy, he's got a helmet. You get the you see the effect, and now you know he's you know why he didn't die, and right. you know that he's not vulnerable. Okay. So. Can you give it an overview of the uh, the armor health system? Is it going to be similar to 2K4, where the, like an armor is going to have the damage, or is it going to be a complete over overheal? Um, I'd say it's it's a little bit different than both 2K4 and UT. So okay. you have there's different types of armor that have different amounts of, of damage reduction. Mm -hmm. You know, um, shield belt uh, takes 100% of damage when it's 
you do. And then the armor stacking is also different. It's, and it's more like the original UT in terms of armor stacking, where you can you can layer different types of armor on, but you can have multiple types of the same armor. So you will have uh, thigh pads and vests and shield belts, and you'll be able to stack those. So the shield belt is coming back then? Yeah. Okay. When, uh, when you have destroyable environments, like a bridge, for example, um, on a level, um, will that respawn over time uh, or be rebuilt during the level so it can be destroyed again? Or? It, it kind of depends on the, the thing. So, for example, here in this level you saw that there were some destroyable arches. Mm -hmm. So those are one-time things. Right. Destroy an arch, what it allows you to do is temporarily block access to that path. But then you can uh, you can destroy by firing on them the, the rock, the boulders that are they're spawned from the explosion, and so eventually clear the path again. Uh, with bridges, um, like in this case, there was a bridge that you could basically activate and open or shut. Um, so obviously that can happen right. as many times from the map as possible. But for the most part, if things are destroyable, then it's a one-time event. And once you've succeeded in doing that, so so we'll try to make it so that it's kind of it makes sense in terms okay. of those missions that, that things that if you destroy something, it's not going to magically come back. Gotcha. Um, is warfare um, is that similar to conquest, or is that what conquest has become? It's what yeah, it's what basically what conquest has become. Conquest. Okay. Are hoverboards only going to be available in Warfare? Uh, they'll be available in, in Onslaught and any of the vehicles. Onslaught, I mean, okay. You mentioned the, um, the, the big sort of five five man vehicle then, so the, the, the big walkers is one of they. Are they sort of similar sort of crewman sort of? So the, the walkers are, uh, and they're they're not they're not uh, they're, they're they're more of a they're more of a, a where the, the five man vehicles. Call it super vehicle. Yeah. So um, the walkers are, are, I'd say, more analogous to. They're probably more powerful than any of the Axon other vehicles, but they're like a they're like a main battle tank kind of okay. vehicle. Um, and they're a two-man vehicle. So there's actually the the driver that controls that uh, fiery beam that you saw, and then there's also a, a turret underneath that can swing around that. Uh, that's good for um, shooting guys on foot that are kind of like getting underneath the... So this is all part of that kind of asymmetrical kind of um, yeah. sort of thing, sort of the, the, the level of cooperation perhaps wouldn't be as much... I mean, it just depends. Uh, they'll, they'll be, I mean, on both sides there's vehicles that are one-man vehicles, vehicles that are two or three-man, and um, kind of five-man. So, so we'll have, I mean, and the Necros will be the same thing, but they'll have vehicles. And it's really based on, on what's fun. I mean, you know, it, if you, put a, if you put a secondary turret on a vehicle, it's more fun to drive your own vehicle unless the secondary turret is really fun or you really feel like you'll be able to, to make the, the vehicle much more useful by, by manning it. So that's, that's kind of what makes the balance between where it's sometimes better to have some one-man vehicles as well. Are uh, dodge jumping and uh, double jumping returning? So double jumping is in, but dodge jumping is not back down. So we okay. still have dodging, but not, not okay. double jumping. What about, um, what about walking or wall dodging? And we do have wall dodging. Okay. Um, so it's all, I mean, and, and things both dodging and wall dodging are a little bit uh, damped down because gravity is higher than it was in 2K4. Mm -hmm. So you can still do some pretty cool moves, but it's just the, the amplitude, I mean, how far you'll go with those. Excellent. Sort of applied to hoverboards and stuff like that now, then is there sort of similar sort of tricks and stunts you can do now that you've got like a kind of personal are you going to be doing sort of wall jumps actually, and stuff with a hoverboard so there's not really any, i mean what we have with the hoverboard now is um we actually have some some tricks that don't have any gameplay impact but they're just fun to yeah. do when you're on your way somewhere so you can actually we've got a couple of different grabs and um <laughs> and spin moves you can do and you can actually combine them in different ways there's a you can do a spin where you come off your board and do a pose in the air and then come back down and spin and things sure. like that so, uh, but, but they don't like say they're not they're not going to you can't dodge them but you can't dodge them. I mean, yeah, and really, and, and the hoverboards aren't designed to be something that you use in combat. I mean, they're designed as an efficient way to get to the battle, okay. which is really something that's, you know, one of the things that we, we feel like is really important to, as a part of what makes UT UT is that you get, we want people to be in the game fast and playing and participating and shooting it. So we don't have respawn cues, and we don't want you to be spending five minutes moving across the map trying to get back to the fight. So when you die, you respawn, and we want you back in the battle as quickly as possible. And that's fun both for the player, that's both for you, and, it's, and it's, I think we think it's more fun for other people because it means that you always have people to fight against and there's never a dull moment in the game. With the, um, one more question about the ranking system. Um, are there going to be additional rewards like, for example, Plaque Monkey came around in 2K3? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, uh, going to have more of those. Are, will those shows up, show up on the, uh, the stat pages also? So we'll have, so there'll be, so there'll be several levels. So there'll be a, um, an in-match thing like getting a Plaque Monkey right. reward. And we'll keep stats for how many times you've gotten that. Okay. And in addition to that, we'll have um, kind of medals or, or, or rewards for people that have done, you know, long-term demonstrate their skill in using the sniper rifle or the flight counter or whatever. That's excellent. 
the um, can you confirm that uh, 2K7 is coming out for the consoles, the Xbox 360 and the PS3? So we've just announced it for the PS3 now, so it's a PC and the PS3. Okay. Well, the, how do the controls differ? The, um, is it being set up just like a regular first-person shooter for the PlayStation, or so, are there going to be any modifications made? Uh, we're already, I mean, so I guess one of the things to start off with talking about that is, one of the things that's really important to us is we're not making any compromises for either version, either the PC or PS3 version, to, for the other game. Okay. So. So we certainly like everything that's in the PC game is there because we thought that was what was best for the PC game. And so what's already starting to happen is that the there's like the, the versions starting to diverge as we see oh this would be this works really well in this version but doesn't you know, work well on the console or that or vice versa. And of course I mean as you alluded to the the big um, challenge with the console version is getting the controls right for a first person shooter. We've already um, unfortunately with that we've already got some good experience between uh, Unreal Championship 2 and Gears and how to do console control. And we've got some cool new ideas that we're trying out now, and so um, so we feel we feel pretty optimistic that we'll be able to have some really good first-person shooter controls. But then other things that you know we're considering is, for example, if uh, you know we feel like a controller may actually be a better way to control a vehicle than a, than a mouse and keyboard is. So maybe with the uh, the console version, and we plan to have unique content that's different between the two versions that will emphasize the uh, vehicle-based game types a little more on the console version and things like that. So there'll definitely be some differences between the two versions, and there won't be direct ports. Um, will the characters be customizable at all? Um, in original UT, we saw like for a deathmatch game, you could choose different colors. Um, oh, actually, we have a, a much more uh, rich uh, customization system that okay. we're planning for characters. Where basically you'll be able to um, to select uh, custom, you know, select what shoulder pads you have, your, your you know, what armor you're wearing on your torso, and all okay. kinds of things. So we're, it's going to be a much more extensive customization system. Uh, it's not quite ready to show yet, um, okay. but it's uh, it's really cool. We've already got the worked out in all our char uh, characters we're, we're building so that they're extremely customized. Cool. Stuff that the community can, can add to and uh, and Absolutely, and that's one of the things that we thought about is that now, you know, with the level of detail that we have in our characters, I mean, really, there, there are millions of polygons of, of detail. It's much harder to build an entire character. So, so one of the things that we, we see this is it allows uh, community modelers to build on parts so you can know, have cool hats or moose shoulder hats or whatever without having to build an entire character. Still just but add build the shoulder cool contributions to the code to the characters. Awesome. Honestly, um, probably Tim DeRosa, this is how he's the best guy to talk to about that kind of thing. I mean, right now, I think we're looking at the game shipping very early next year. Okay. When it's done. Yeah, when it's <laughs> done. Two weeks. I mean, that's... <laughs> oh, I had one more question. Um, there's been a lot of response about the dark blockers for the, uh, the Necros vehicles. Is that going to be able to climb over um, certain types of terrain that, like, a tank can't get over? Absolutely. And actually, they're very, very much more mobile in that way. I mean, they're actually relatively slow moving. Mm -hmm. But they can move over very uneven terrain. They can go up very steep slopes. Um, anything that's, that's not too tall for their legs to get over them, I and they can climb up. They can't quite get up those buildings, but a building that's right. just a little bit shorter, they can actually climb up onto. So they're, that's that's really like that's one of the ways that they're very different from many of the Axon vehicles is that kind of mobility. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got some other uh, vehicles. We're not ready to show you up with the necklace, that also have very different kinds of mobility, and it really changes how you play with them. And, and we're certainly designing some maps that are all about you know the kind of unique things that the necklace vehicles can do. I noticed on the, on the walkers as well, you had some big searchlights coming out. It's just yeah. there was this bit where the searchlights came across. Is that well, something you, you having some darker, darker maps and stuff? Where that's um, gonna be a little bit of that. Actually, the, the, the main reason for that is so that the Dark Walker's main weapon, that big beam, is extremely powerful, but it's mounted on its back. And so and the, 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 so the whole body has to turn to aim it. And so it's relatively slow to aim. So the thing is, so those search beams give you an indication. See, right. If that thing's looking at you, you're dead. Yeah. So, so you want to really know, like, because it's you can stay out of its if you can stay out of its way you can fight it but the but if you get so that's, the search beams are there so that you you know which way it's looking so you can stay out of its way. Yeah. Oh, that's the time. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I also heard a rumor that Nvidia is going to be having two K seven on the floor. Is that true? Uh, no, it's not on the floor. Not here. Yeah. Okay. So. so.